everybody. Asthma in children is a leading cause of visits to the emergency room, hospitalizations, and a lot of missed school days. But if people really get a hold of it and take care of these uh, kids with good treatment and prevention, they can prevent damage to those growing lungs. My first guest, Dr. John Robertson with TriStar, is here to talk about a very, very prevalent illness in our kids. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Sure thing. Let's talk about how widespread childhood asthma, cases of childhood asthma are in this country. It's very widespread. It's the number one chronic disease of childhood. About one in 13 children have asthma, Dep depending on the year you quote. Mm -hmm. So millions of children the, in this country. But the a little over six million children in this country that have asthma. Let's talk about what happens in the kids' bodies, in their lungs, and what triggers so many cases of asthma. I know there are various triggers. Yes, so asthma is a problem of the airways or the, the tubes in the lungs that conduct, conduct air uh, from the outside world into our bodies. The, the problem with these tubes is they get inflamed, they get swollen, um, the, they produce extra mucus uh, that shouldn't be there, uh, and the muscles that wrap around these air tubes uh, constrict. All, the, all, of these, uh, the, all of these things sort of conspire to basically shrink these air tubes and make them smaller and therefore uh, harder to breathe. That's what generates the symptoms of coughing and wheezing and chest tightness that are most prevalent. That you just answered my next question about some of the symptoms. Mm -hmm. When do you typically see these symptoms in kids? I mean, does it start when they're babies or usually a little older? Uh, it can start when they're babies, usually by the age of five. Most people with asthma have had their first set of symptoms, um, but it can start at any age. Mm -hmm. Is it usually seen in the parents? You see it run in families or not necessarily? It, de it, doesn't, uh, it definitely runs in families. It doesn't have to. Um, the, there is a, a group of di diseases we call atopic or allergic diseases. Um, this includes hay fever and r allergic rhinitis uh, and eczema as well as food allergies. Sometimes it's another member of this allergic family that runs in the family, whereas the, the mother may have eczema and the, ba the, the baby or young child develops asthma. So is that something that as a pediatrician, you know, that you are looking for, if you know that about the, the parent, one of the parents, that you're looking for that early on? Yes, absolutely. We want to the acquire a family history sure. uh, the, the, and see what else uh, the, is, is uh, see what other allergic problems are within the family so that we know what the child is at risk for. Identify early on. That was one of, one of my questions. So the risk factors, let's talk about what some of the risk factors are. So that if you do have a parent with some issues, that's one of the risk factors? Absolutely. The, so the, the risk factors, you can divide them into two categories. Um, the risk factors you can control and the ones that you can't. Um, the ones that you can control, number uh, the most important is smoking. Mm -hmm. it, it don't smoke when it's when a, a pregnant mother smoke or when a uh, the a child is exposed to smoke in their home environment, even if the parent is smoking outside, it increases their risk of wheezing and the risk of a having asthma. I see a lot of the other uh, risk factors for developing childhood asthma also includes uh, again family history of allergies and or asthma, prenatal and postnatal exposure to tobacco smoke. You yeah. just alluded to living in an urban area with increased levels of air pollution as as we grow so quickly in Nashville that's got to be a, a side effect of the growth right the uh, the, the un unintended consequence of progress yes, yes. <laughs> uh, the so there there's the hygiene hypothesis of asthma uh, there's higher incidence uh, in uh, children born and who grow in urban areas versus the the out in the country um, the the there's no one factor, it's just the groups of things you're exposed to in the country versus the groups of things you're exposed to in the, in the city. Some would say we're, we're too clean as far as germ, mm -hmm. germs go in the city, um, but there's increase of irritants and toxins like smog and smoke and ozone. Let's go back to the symptoms again too. I know you men mentioned mm -hmm. wheezing. Um, I believe you said uh, chest tightness is one of the, the symptoms too. Yes, the coughing and wheezing are the most, the most common 
the, the this chest tightness, uh, just feeling of difficulty breathing. Sometimes it's just being tired with exercise. Mm -hmm. um, an important thing to note about the symptoms is they're different for every patient. Some patients only cough, some patients only wheeze, but they, they can both have asthma that responds the same to the asthma control or medication. All right, and it can be a whistling sound too. The we, I, I can imitate it if you like, um, but the mm -hmm. wheezing, wheezing is like a thousand far away whistles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, and the cough can be, it's classically a dry cough, okay. uh, the, but can also be a wet productive cough. So what complications can arise as a result of asthma? The, the, in a child, uh, we, th we think about school absences, uh, and therefore, if your kid's home, you're home. Um, the, the, generally, they, they don't get, when their asthma is very active, they don't get to be normal, happy kids. They don't get to run and play as the, like, like everyone else. They start off fine, but after five minutes, they're, they're struggling and having to rest or complaining mm -hmm. to their parents they're tired. Uh, and so a, a warning sign I usually give to my parents is if you see your child they can't keep up with their peers and their four. You know, we don't have star athletes at four years old. Uh, the, the everyone should be basically equal. So if there's a child lagging behind, that the we want to look for a medical reason that they're that they're having to rest twice mm -hmm. as often as their as their peers. And you hate to see that. You know, that's got to affect the kid emotionally, the child emotionally as well, too, if they can't keep up. Absolutely. Um, the the a me one of the measures of how well controlled or how uncontrolled is my asthma is, does the kid get to be a kid? Sure. Or th does their, their life look the same or mm -hmm. different from their mm -hmm. peers? Um, in, the, the, in 2018, the medications we have for asthma are extremely effective. Uh, and so the, when used properly, I would say 95% of the time we can uh, take that child who untreated can't participate normally in the chi in in kid life, uh, the and and turn it around and make it basically help them be normal a normal kid. Okay, in our last thirty seconds here, ways to help prevent attacks. Uh, the take your medicine, um, the 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 right medicine used in the right way, given at the right time, uh, will help prevent attacks. The there are two categories of asthma medicine, quick relief. Uh, which the albuterol is the most common one, and uh, the controller medications. Uh, people who use their controller medications are less likely to have attacks. All right, really solid information. As we get back to the school year two, you said when you tend to see more attacks also because of viruses mm -hmm. as, as the year progresses with, with school and everything. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Robertson. Appreciate thank you, you coming thank you in for and having me. educating us more about childhood asthma. Thank, thank you. you. And we'll be back with a whole lot more right after this.